Hello and welcome to session number 62 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hi, guys! Hello! Hi. Welcome! <coughs> How are you doing this fine Sunday? Pretty I'm alive. I'm alright. At what cost? Yes, yes, wait. <laughs> no, not the cost. Get a the, good the time! Cost of I I, I'm so sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Sleepy Jory. Yeah. Well, that's what Naruto running does to you. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Too much Naruto running. I'm 35 or 36 years old. I can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry. This session will feature no Naruto running whatsoever. What? I bet. Well, wait. We can add. We can add a little bit if you'd like. Okay. A little bit of Naruto running. I'm back. Okay. All right. All right. Good. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Zaster now we're still ran right back to the seat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, session summary time. And uh, can Dennis do it? What? I'm out again. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! He's now <clears throat> running towards the sea again. <laughs> Can you uh, handle it? Despite... Yeah, I'll definitely try. Ooh. First off, after listening to the whole session, well fucking done because that was a pretty good session. <laughs> oh. Wish I was there, but oh well. <laughs> what can I do? <clears throat> so I'll try to summarize it as good as I understood it. So it's basically cut into three parts. The first part. The group is deep in the mines and has finally met another person. Upon talking, Tekka believes to recognize that voice as the voice of the drow, who the group has met when they went unconscious. He turns out to not be that drow. His name is Vonan, and when taking the mask off, the group can see that he has pale indigo blue skin, long white hair, is an elf, and has eyes that are the striking crimson color. And on top of that, he looks really old. Compared to the other drow, from the being unconscious, who has blue eyes, is dressed very differently and way younger. The reason Vonan is scaring or attacking the gnomes is to scare them off from mining deeper in Ladaria. They're because the gnomes are looking for a substance called Nightmare, which is the only ingredient for their unmaking powder they, ca they cannot get on Plurna. Vonan is apparently fond of the gnomes for whatever reason and doesn't want the same fate that happened to the Nahadra happen to them, since they already were at the brink of extinction once. Varian and the wolf have a long talk. Varian revealed the insignia of the wolf on her shield. The longer the talk, the deeper they get into an interesting discussion about what the war has done to the ones that experience it all. All of them are struggling, adjusting to life, believing in gods nowadays. Especially Virion, who is worried about planting the seed of Vakanas in Lidaria. The question comes up from Virion whether gods learn lessons, because they could have stopped the silent war, but didn't interfere till they realized the people had something to threaten them with. Vonan believes that the era of peace is upon us, though, and especially has faith and trust in the Opossum, who is the god of peace. Also, Pip and the wolf trade rocks. The wolf creates a rock turtle, which Pip puts in his hair, and Vonan takes an azure ride, azure ride, because it reminds him of the eyes of his lead love. Act number two! Nui and Tekka have a conversation, and they talk about the sea, because nobody can live in the sea. It's the place of the death. The group learns that the sea is the place where the dead people will go, and their souls get washed clean. Until it's being given back to a new, being given back to a new person, the devils live there. We knew that already, and they wouldn't allow other creatures to live there. So, what does that mean for Telex? I have no idea. Act number three. Pip then decides to send his last ingredient from the list to Granny. In return, the nut goes away, and he gets a new list and another bag, bag with nine rocks in it. Upon reading the instruction manual. Pip plants one of those rocks into the ground, and we get a mini rock pit, which will stay for seven days. The end. 
<laughs> Yay! Yay! I hope I covered everything. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you did. Woo! Good. As far as I can tell, it was everything. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, really good and interesting conversations you all had. Um, here is your... Mm, absentee inspiration. It could have also been bullet point inspiration. Or Naruto run inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> so many options. Um, as I mentioned <clears throat> at the end of last session, if Brooke would have liked to have some conversation with the wolf that you have, that you want to roleplay, any questions that you need answering to, uh, we can rewind a tiny bit back to when you were you guys were talking to the wolf and go over that. My only question for that is: Would I still have my state, and would I still meet the other drow? You did not meet the other drow. Oh, that's interesting. I guess um, the main point for Brooks then would have been he wouldn't have like a direct question, but just trying to understand, get an idea of everything that has been discussed before, and understanding what happened to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the between the party and the Vonan, they would have caught you up to speed. That's that's for sure. So like Brooke has all the knowledge that he has missed out on. Uh, there's nothing. Uh, hidden from him. Minus, I, I suppose the only thing is that Virin had a conversation with a wolf that wasn't shared with anyone else. But that would be the only thing. <clears throat> um, Brooke is... Uh, when Brooke was reformed, uh, he essentially has like the benefit of a long rest. Hit points are back. Everything is fine. Mm -hmm. Nothing is out of place. He did also receive uh, the same blessing as everybody else. So everybody mm -hmm. should at this point have the uh, the feet whose name is escaping me right now, but you know Eldritch what Adept. Yes. <clears throat> uh, so at this point, all of you should have that with whatever invocation you have picked. Mm -hmm. uh, I have what else that. do you want to know? No, that's it. That's it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. In that case, I'm going to, let's see. Uh... It's actually funny because in my mind, I would have had the conversation with the other draw and then being brought back to the mine and see the draw again and be like, oh, what the <laughs> fuck? Did you all die now? <laughs> no, you, you did not meet uh, uh, the original young draw at all. All right. Hey. So we pick back up from where we originally had left. Pip has just obtained a new version of himself, a new rocky companion who will be with him for a while. Uh, and you have resolved to continue your journey to the southeast. The idea is that you are aiming to reach the spot where supposedly um, the magical stuff belonging to Jamuel is supposed to be. Its location was previously triangulated by you guys when you were back in uh, <clears throat> back in Jamuel's tower. Um, through this device that is able to locate items that belong to Jamuel. Uh, so you have a decent idea of the location, but it's not a perfect... Uh, you have just pinpointed a spot on your map, you believe you should be heading roughly over there. Um, that's really all you have to work with. Uh, based on, the, on your map, you estimate that the journey from the mine you are currently at, um, in a straight line, should take about uh, two weeks, perhaps just slightly less than two weeks. Uh, are you ready to leave the mine behind? Let's do uh, it. Well, have anything else here? 
Okay. Sounds good to me. So, we can begin with one survival checks from whoever is taking the lead. It can be up to two people, one giving advantage to the other, or both of them rolling. Ah, second, I'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> it will help whoever. Take, I can go for it, sure. Okay. So, Tekka, you can roll at the advantage of survival checks. Mm -hmm. um, second, I will also take a survival check from Pip. This is for ingredient gathering. Nice. Fifteen. Okay. Third, I need a survival... Uh, no, not survival. Not, not anymore. <laughs> We're done with survival checks. Uh, no more survival. I need an insight check from the four of you. On who? J -j -j just roll it. <laughs> 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 On the DM. <laughs> hey yo, high five soon. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> I believe to you. Okay. As you resume your journey through the jungle, day after day, the further you go, Taka taking the lead and having a, uh, an excellent sense of direction. So you guys never quite get turned around. You never quite get distracted. You take regular breaks, um, which Taka imposes on all of you, and actually kind of nice. Uh, your the uh, the landscape around you begins to not exactly clear, but uh, over the course of many days, it does become a little bit easier to travel uh, through it. Um, Pip's uh, Pip has more chances to actually summon horses, and uh, um, for you guys to travel more and more on horseback and less and less on your own two legs, having to climb over very thick vegetation and. Uh, um, having to take detours when the horses can no longer travel. Um, so everything is proceeding pretty well for the first few days. Uh, Pip, as for your ingredient gathering, I forgot to actually open the thing. <laughs> Give me a second. Um, so we are currently in a jungle. So with that roll, uh, all of, uh, 15? 15. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. We're only 3d10. Holy crap. This is serious business, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> It's wiggling. It's a wiggling. It's oh, 13. It's be wiggling, though. that's okay. It gives me time to roll my ducks. <laughs> what a pleasant result I got. Wait, okay. where are my foxes? <laughs> okay, I remember. Where are your foxes? <laughs> we're, we're good. Okay, skip that, skip that, skip that, skip that, and... None of these. Okay. During the first stretch of this journey, Pip, you're able to collect, uh, write these down, two cat's tongues. Mm -hmm. uh, I think... I think you have some of those before, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Plenty. Um, then... Uh, th 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 six nightshades. Ooh, that's a new one. Um, nightshades, an inky black flower with purple stalk. Um, notoriously poisonous. Don't eat it. And last one. Whoops. Here it is. Um, that is six of them. 
Uh... Okay. Um, this is called <laughs> Acid Dew. Um, like its more famous family, Honeydews, Acid Dew is a carnivorous plant, but with a stronger sting. Its droplets dissolve its spray with a sticky acid instead of enzymes in syrup. Um, nice. I'll put those next to my other six. The first time... Oh, you already had some? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. I thought this was new. Uh, you probably so you didn't know... describe it, though. Uh, it's possible. Uh, so you would know not to touch them with your bare hands. Perhaps the first oh. time you did that, uh, um, uh, you realize that this also uh, really hurts your skin when you grab them, and you ended up with uh, um, like these, uh, what do you call them in English? Uh, when, when your skin forms these bubbles. Blisters? Them. Blisters, yes. So you end up uh, with painful blisters on your fingers. Hand so. blisters. No! Whoa. No! <laughs> the worst. You have an additional set of hands, at least. <laughs> yeah, Pipple makes Squeak get them. He's oh, immune. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be the rock st uh, statue of you. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Squeak? He's immune to poison. Unless yeah. this is actually acid. In which um, case... It is acid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then after Squeak gets his blisters, then Rock Pipple do it. <laughs> Okay, that's it for the ingredient gathering for now. Um, when Pip, when you when you touch uh, those plants, uh, uh, and you realize you remember, oh yeah, these should not be touched uh, <laughs> with my bare hands, and then you make Squeak do it, and Squeak also suffers from it, and then <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rock Pip is now collecting the flowers. Uh, you immediately. Like, with tears in your eyes, you waddle up to Pontifex, and you just hold out your hands, and you, like, sheepishly, kindly ask for, for healing. Um, and Pontifex provides it. Uh, this is during one of those times when you're just, uh, um, you're taking a short rest, the tech is sleeping, um, <clears throat> and, uh, it's, it's Virion, and... Really, only Virion that notices that <clears throat> as Pontifex is providing his magical healing to Pip, it seems to take him longer than usual to perform the spell. And she can see on his face that he is struggling. And once Pip is gone, uh, um, Pontifex seems. his expression has darkened. Um, as recently, whenever you guys have any free time, whenever Tekka is taking a nap, uh, and for sometimes hours into your long rests as well, uh, Pontifex has just been working uh, on the grimoire, on trying to uh, understand its contents. Uh, and after healing Pip's hands, uh, he uh, Pontifex just shuffles off in a corner and takes out the grimoire, but doesn't do anything with it, doesn't open it. He just remains sitting, lost in thoughts, until it's time to resume your journey. Over the course of the next few days, Viren is kind of like paying attention to this, and uh, it seems that Pontifex is struggling with his magic every once in a while, whenever he um, is getting rid of uh, bruises after Pip falls on his knees, uh, whenever he's producing water for all of you to drink. He manages to do all of those things, but uh, it's always taking him a second longer, another second longer. Not enough for anyone but Virion to notice, and his mood is... Um, again, just to her eyes, visibly getting um, less and less pleasant. Um, and yet, despite this, his, uh, um, his mean comments directed on Virion are becoming less and less frequent. Um, he's mainly just not really paying attention to her, any to her anymore. Uh-huh. Uh, 
one, two, three, four. Uh, everybody can count down uh, four rations each. Water is provi provided by, by Pontifex, but food, uh, you, you either have to use your rations, or we can have someone other than Pip and Tekka, uh, as they're the ones leading the group, um, can attempt to survival checks to gather food instead. I will yeah. do that. Uh, I, I, I do not have any um, rations, so... Yeah, I will help them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we got this. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Right? <laughs> it might be. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. It might be better if Virian helps and you roll. Just, oh, oh, okay. That's what you're, okay, sure, sure. Just sure. putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> if we were on the ocean, this would be fine, but this is a jungle. So. Oh! Hey. Give me all the food! Damn. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your help. Um, <clears throat> um, the first day after you left the mine, uh, so when you're still in relative proximity to it, um, Brook hears sounds, um, and then quickly as he points them out, these, these animal noises, um, he has Pip translate for the group, and it turns out that uh, near this area, there's this very large group of... Uh, um, they are like Armabastus. Uh, they are a different uh, breed, perhaps. They're smaller. Um, <clears throat> even the adults, uh, um, they're generally smaller, but... Uh, um, and they have like this much thinner fur compared to the ones you're familiar with. Uh, and there is... Dozens and dozens of them, uh, and Pippi quickly realized they've all gathered because they all heard like a call for help. And you remember playing that whistle when you were fighting the Fangs of Nightfall? Um, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> all these creatures gathered the other day. Actually, um, through a through a combination of Pip being able to speak with them, um, <clears throat> well, mainly that. Uh, <laughs> um, you actually befriend them and they accompany you on your journey for the first four days or so of travel. Um, the group thinning more and more as uh, more of these creatures eventually decide that they're done traveling in the same direction as you. And during that time, they assist with uh, foraging for food. They know all the spots where the best fruits can be plucked. Um, and uh, they, they know which ones are good to eat and which ones aren't. Uh, so not only do you not have to actually spend those four uh, rations uh, that I told you earlier to remove, so if you have already removed them, you can put them back. Uh, but also, you gather additional ones, uh, an, an extra two per person. Ooh, nice. Incredible. Wow. Well and done. Eventually, yes. each of these uh, animals is uh, um, off on their own. Uh, you basically had this massive escort that just kept you safe. Like, nobody messed with you while you had uh, all these beasts just with you. Is that an extra two? Yes, an extra two. Um, right. Also, I just want to officially announce that Pumpkin is licking Phoenix clean, and this has Aww. never happened before. Pumpkin, like, kind of hates him. Progress. We're having a magical friends. moment. <laughs> ah, Beautiful. okay. That made me happy. <laughs> On the dawn of your fifth day of travel uh, towards the location where you believe the staff to be, uh, to currently be. Um, mm, let me make sure I got it right. Do, do, do. Is this correct? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, you slept... Which day of travel did you say? This is this the fifth. fifth. Uh, immediately after sleeping, so at the dawn of the fifth day. Um, Pip, your... Your sleep hasn't uh, been calm. 
you had not exactly bad dreams, not nightmares, um, but foreboding ones. Uh, it, it felt like not something that your mind made up, but rather more almost something of, of a message, like something that was there for you specifically to see. Um, but when you wake up, the the details of the dream, they've already faded from your memory. Uh, and you're just left with this vague feeling of anxiety, like this foreboding uh, sense that something bad is upon you. Yeah. Uh... Throughout their traveling, after Pip summons horses and whatnot, um, everyone else can tell that Pip is just feeling, or or seeming visibly just on edge, um, like looking off to the sides every now and then, looking behind him, uh, just sort of distracted and different from his usual playful self. So I think. Between Pontifex being weird and Pip now being weird, experience is going to like gently suggest that maybe we take a day off if we can get somewhere safe, just to have an extra day to recuperate because everyone seems like a little extra tired right now. <clears throat> is something specific on your mind that's making you so on edge? They look to mainly Pip. And Pontifex. Pontifex would just dismiss this. He would say that no, 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 everything is all right. Uh, giving him Pip. a raised eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> Pip just says through squeak. I, I don't know. I, I, I think I just didn't sleep very good. Maybe very on his right then. Take a day off. I don't know how pressing our travel time is, but sometimes what you need is to take a, a bit of a breather. Um, just to relax every so often. We've been uh, pushing pretty hard. I think we can afford a day or even half a day just to uh, recuperate a little more. But we've already got all these horses here. <laughs> we can... You, you can get more horses. Mm. You've been doing it the entire time. On this particular day, the horses are invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these horses! <laughs> I just rolled for it. <laughs> it was like, we have all these horses! And gestures at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We can. How about we take half a day? We travel, and when we would normally stop and break, we can stop there for today. Okay. I guess no. We can also just keep an extra eye out for that day. Just make sure nothing is around here, since Pip, you seem to be looking around, so in case we spot anything, 10 eyes are better, or 12? How many are we in the group right now? Mm. Six, right? Are we finding the horses? Brooke, Pontifex, oh. Pip, Virion, Tekka, and Nui. Let's squeak. Plus horses. Either and way, Orm. Orm doesn't we have, have more eyes, than but two counts. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we can catch something. How's Nui um, doing? Nui has been fine. Um, she has just been, like, she has this very calming and uh, um, impatient kind of presence. Every once in a while you kind of forget that she's there, but sometimes she, like, 
approaches to uh, ask for the book and then communicate uh, something. Um, she has been trying to figure out where exactly she is on Lidaria right now. Um, and she has started to like get some ideas of where she would like to go perhaps, but for now she's sticking with you for as long as you let her. Um, but she's doing fine in terms of mood. Yeah, maybe, maybe it would be good to take a day. I'm sure everyone will feel more like themselves if we do that. So, um, are you taking the day off or half a day? I think we can take a full day. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have a full day of downtime. What kind of activities would you like to pursue? Let me, let me bring you to the tower. Uh, as the tower will be available throughout the day, you can be indoor if you'd like. I don't remember where I put the tower. Campsite, campsite, tower. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we want some arts and crafts time, so I think <laughs> this is a good opportunity for that. Oh, I miss this music. <laughs> arts and crafts? Um, what exactly? Um, oh, wait, I know what you're making. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, I'll allow it. Now that Pontifex isn't here, I would like to take the chance against him where he can't roll to beat him in dragon chess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Pontifex, you're distracted. And <laughs> down in the mood. I, I, he is actually distracted, probably. It wants the kitchen because it doubles as his bedroom. <laughs> now we, we don't have to have the playroom. No, that's fine. If you want to play Dragon Chest with Pontifex, you can. You guys will make a little bit of progress. In the, uh, uh, I think you... F did you finish the previous game? I'm pretty sure it was beating me badly. Okay. You can start a new one if you'd like, and you will begin to go through the opening <laughs> during the entire day. <laughs> A few more weeks and you might finish this one too. <laughs> Sure, maybe we can formulate it as in in this state, Pontifex doesn't want to continue that, so we start a new one in case mm. the other one isn't finished. Knowing Amy would probably insist that he still wanted to, though. <laughs> yeah. Alright, it's okay. a new game. Anything from Tekka? Uh, yeah, I think Tekka will do some usual things, like be on the lookout, dig for more ant eggs for Ollie. Uh, I think Tekka has been trying to teach Ollie how to fetch things, and it has never worked, ever, and it probably <laughs> will never be. Um, uh, and also will Tekka, depending on what Pip is doing, uh, yeah, because Pip was covering for herbs, uh, Tekka might ask Pip for like some herbs to look for uh because he wants to try messing with his poisoner's kit to make a poison Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. oh well i just got some of these uh nightshade flowers i know these are pretty poisonous you want some hmm. how poisonous are they for um, eating touching what should I be aware of? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which ones? Nightshades. Nightshades. Um, okay. So, the poison is specifically when ingested on the nightshades. 
Um, not only uh, I don't know. Um, can I have a nature check from both of you? Sure. Yeah. Seventeen. Okay. Um, so both of you know not to eat this thing, um, but and you both know that you could make a poison out of it. Um, Pip would have the additional knowledge that uh, um, this can also be used to make the uh, something that uh, gives you resistance, uh, uh, not to poison, but specifically to necrotic damage. Um, I don't know how to flavor this. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> uh, the necrotic... Ugh. The... the, the... Mm, I got nothing. But it you can do that. the natural decay of your skin cells. Yes. You can surprisingly make a really good, like, lotion for your hands. <laughs> Great. So don't eat it. But do put it all over your skin. Do <laughs> touch it. <laughs> wash your hands before you eat. Yeah. <laughs> eat it, die. Rub it, <laughs> live better. Uh, yeah, uh, with that help uh, and assistance, uh, Tekka has never done this before and will probably fail a few times and will probably mm -hmm. not have anything like this day, but it's going and to try to make a... Yeah? He's also not proficient, right, with the poisoner's Yeah, skin. exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Never worked with it before. Uh, but the attempt is to make a poison that would stick to arrows. So, like, you could shoot poison okay. arrows. But, yeah, I don't think... I think I think this would be something long-term. This will not have a good result on day one. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what you can do that would help on day one, um, and, and Pip would direct it to it, is that Pip has been learning a lot from some of RN's uh, research books. Um, oh. So there is a little bit of overlap between just what he has been doing with the herbalism kit and what you're ultimately attempting to do. Um, mm -hmm. So today, having a lot of free time you can and having the tower available, you can go through the books, get a feel for how to do what you're trying to do, and then you can do your first, uh, like, couple of rolls uh, to see if you're getting the hang of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And as you said, it will be a long-term project, but, like, you're, you're setting the the base today for it. Yeah, sounds good. Speaking of Aaron Moore's book, uh, Pip has that book just sort of, like, hovering right next to his head in the kitchen, the pages sort of flipping back and forth by themselves and he's got a, a pot and a pan uh, and his um, uh, like uh, potion making implements They're, they've grown legs and have started walking around and and Pip is just trying to research how to uh, how to make some of the things in this book so anyone walking into the kitchen will see that nonsense this is some Beauty and the Beast kind of stuff going on in this uh -huh. kitchen. <laughs> okay. Um, I think after some time, or after Brooke is probably getting a beating by Pontifex, and then they're done, <laughs> he would probably look for Varian. <laughs> I don't know if I'd find her still crafting. Probably. It's taking her time. So she's not in a super big hurry. She would stop in the room. Oh, what are you doing there? Uh, so he would see that Virian, I'm assuming, or she would have been scrounging around for like some like metal wire, just something decently nice that she could work with. And she would have on the table kind of laid out um, that any tools that she would need. And she is wire wrapping her star boba just to make like a little pendant out of it Aww. and she has a crescent moon pendants out on the table as well and she's sort of putting them together she's Ooh. motions oh, I, uh, I wanted to keep this close 
but this is a good way to do it. That's a beautiful way to do it. Have you made more of these before? Not, not particularly, not like this. Um, I was able to uh, rest on it though. Um, sort of a, a thing we, we can do else. Uh, borrow knowledge from each other when we rest. That's a cool idea. How long do you think it will take till it's done? I should have it done before the end of the day. It's not a, a huge undertaking. It's it's pretty small. It's I've almost got finished. Um, the, the pendant's already done. It was a gift. Yeah. It's, uh, it looks really good. Uh, uh, thank you. I actually wanted to talk to you because. With everything that has happened, like in the last few days, and for the first time ever with this group, me actually going down in a battle, I do want to thank you all for not giving up and not leaving me behind. But mainly I wanted to thank you because um, it's weird. These people haven't really fought before, but you have, so when it comes to a battle, I don't feel that alone anymore, and it takes a lot of pressure off my back. <laughs> so, uh, and you're pretty good at what you're doing, so thank you for that. I have a lot of experience. You're quite, you're quite welcome. I appreciate the compliments. You know, it's, uh... I try not to leave anyone behind. Not if... Uh, not if we can help it. Not if it's not absolutely necessary. I'm glad you are all right. I wasn't sure what was happening. Going on, it's strange. It's not often that somebody goes down and then is just gone like that. I mean, I don't really know what what happened either, except for what I was told. Because the last thing I saw was whatever last breath visions I had of going back to the war and everything being like cloudy around me, losing orientation till I eventually dropped unconscious from a hit. So I was very glad that I got to wake up again. Hey, yeah. yeah? Go, go ahead, go ahead. I was actually wondering, since you have since you have been part of the war and me having heard about how some of my old people from my troop are doing, how can you, or like, what gets you to still pick up your weapon and fight? Because a lot of them have dropped their life completely and not gonna lie, I've tried and it hasn't been that easy, but what brings you back? Is it necessity? Do you still have something to do? Something to fight for? I do. I I did try to give it up also. That's actually why I came to Ladaria. I was hoping that change of location would let me leave things behind, as it were. But no, I, I do still have more to fight for. I, I'm sure you you know that I'm, I'm quite old. Yeah. So, not. I know what things were like before, the war. And they weren't, good. And I don't want to go back to that. And 
if I can keep fighting so people after me don't have to. So be it. Brooke smiles. I like that. I think this is going to be assumed, but I would like to say it. I do enjoy your company and your view of things in general, and all of that has at least made me trust you quite a bit. So whatever you want to do, feel free to be open about it, and I'll see if I can help you. Because I agree that if others don't have to fight, but I can solve it for them, that would be great. But at the same time, it's complicated. I do want to fight for myself as well. So I have made that decision for me that if you need any help, don't be afraid to ask. Of course not. I always fight it. Fight better in uh, teams. We're not going solo. Same it's here. good to know you have someone. I do. I know uh, the war was long and complicated. I do hope that at some point I can speak with the others. I feel like there's a lot of information that they've missed that has affected how they see things, how things happened. I think when the time comes, especially for people like Pip, who is literally grown up here, Tekka, who hasn't been to Plurner, and even Telex, if he should come back. You're right, they don't know what it is, and they are deserving of not having experienced war, not having to go through this, but that obviously is our responsibility to make sure that the cruelties that happened, the fear and pain that was inflicted into people and the families that have been ripped apart weren't for nothing, just for another war to start. Right. I, I, I mean, I certainly don't hold it against them, don't get me wrong. I know they have no way of knowing they shouldn't have to, but... Unfortunately, it seems that uh, old grudges have come here, and it's going to keep happening, and if I can give a history lesson at least, I would like to do that. He scratches his back across the head, and is like, I think the grudges, at least when it comes to the gnomes, have been kind of influenced by me. Why is that? Yeah. I mean, from the start, whenever we talked about gnomes or were on our way to Erica, I did warn them because of my past experience of them literally betraying us right after the war that they are not to be trusted. And then the first situation we have is where we obviously didn't handle the situation right, but them pointing multiple guns at us and shooting Pontifex didn't help that cause either, and since then it has been kind of a thing. I think, at least in that regard, they are more hurt by what they have done to probably Pontifex and their immediately and their immediately and their immediate friends than real past issues. I think at least that comes mainly from me. <laughs> I mean, not for not, it does take a lot of self-control not to shoot pun effects myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you have it rough with him. I'm sorry for that. But I think somewhere deep down, he does care. Otherwise, he wouldn't have stuck with us. Unfortunately, it's... I hate to say I'm used to it, but... Towards you in general? Well, not 
not specifically myself, but elves. Oh, the yeah, okay. war. Yeah. That's fair. I have to say the one thing that happened with the gnome that did kind of make me at least back down a little bit on it, on the campaigning against them towards the group, was when we met Rangina and I'm not sure if you were told of her story completely, but she was basically killed by my people, by the Furbolgs, and then brought back to life by the wolf. And she was friendly to me, even though I'm still a Furbolg. So I'll at least try to be a bit more open-minded. But it's hard. It's really hard. After a little bit, Virion just... She takes out her gun and lays it on the table. Just puts her hand on it. I know it's hard for a lot of you to grasp. Uh, especially bad first impressions and all that. But... There's a good chance that I might not be here if it weren't for the cooperation in the war. And us and the gnomes, they were allies. Us, them, and them to us. Yeah, you can count us in. We work with you. So, I'm sure you understand why I'm it rubs me the wrong way when it's... It hears people speaking like that to people that I owe my life to. Was there... Alright, how about that? Help me understand. If you want to tell me what they did for you. I mean, it was certainly mutual. There was a situation, my my ship, the one I was serving on first, um, came across a, a gnomish vessel under attack. We, we weren't a ship for combat, we were a traitor ship mostly. Small, quick, but we intervened. And in the attack, our ship was sunk. We lost a lot of people, but those that survived tended to us that were injured. We lost a lot that day. I lost a lot. It's... I mean, as bad as the war is, it does bring people together. And at least when it comes to that, those are the memories of the war I at least like to think about. The friendships you've built, the people you have been together. So yeah, I get that. Fearing gets really quiet at that, actually. It's kind of nods. Right. Um, hold on to those. Important. Sorry, can you repeat that? Hold on to those uh, important? Uh, memories, their they're importance. I will, that's all I have. Um, I'm going to get back to work. You're welcome to uh, stay if you'd like. I'd like to finish this uh, while we have the time. All right, you could do that. I'll take a look what the other are doing. I think while walking out, he does pat her on the shoulder. He'll and like goes. smile and like pat his hand and let him go. Okay. Anything 
else for today? Mm, I know what Pip is doing. Uh, we have finished resolving what Tekka is doing. Uh, I think we're good to continue. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. Hi. So... Moving on. Pip, um... All day long... You have been a little bit on edge, and with uh, the suggestion of just taking a day off and um, just recovering from all the crazy adventures you've been on and just uh, uh, getting to work on your little projects, it, it helps a little bit, but you still have this nagging feeling in the back of your head. So every once in a while you go check on Tekka. Did he poison himself? Is he doing okay? And he's fine. You <laughs> check on the others. Pontifex seems to just be kind of on his own, um, studying his books. Uh, every once in a while he and, uh, and Brooke go to like finally make a move on their, on their chessboard and then they leave for hours and then come back for another move. Um... <clears throat> Vivian is keeping herself busy and uh, um, your own work is going fine. By um, since you guys all also had like the, the whole free day, um, you don't have to spend rations for today. Uh, you had plenty of time to just collect something nearby. Um, so by the time it's uh, uh, time to go to sleep, you, uh, Pip, you have noticed uh, nothing that would have justified that paranoid feeling in the back of your mind. And finally, as you're drifting off to sleep, you can finally let go of it. Um, so, resolving the long rest. Um... Okay. <clears throat> Each of you make sure to check Discord real quick. Just in case I sent you something. I'm not saying I did. I just might have. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And you may resolve your, your long rest. Um, as for Pip... When you fall asleep, you're finally serene, and then you wake up the following morning and that feeling is back. That feeling that you just dreamt of uh, something um, foreboding, some kind of warning that something, is, something bad is upon you. You can't quite remember the, the details of the dream, you just know that there's something, something is about to happen. You're just as convinced about it as you were yesterday, despite the fact that the whole day went by and everything was okay. After having just a really good day the day before uh, and going through all that feeling and uh, nothing bad happening, I think Pip is just going to try and convince himself that everything's fine, uh, nothing's wrong, and... It's just gonna put on his his paper mask and uh, allow it to transform into the uh, the villain persona, <laughs> just so he can uh, attempt to be a little more uh, a little more. Uh, oh, is Pip putting on a brave face? Like a <laughs> brave face? Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> you, you got it. You, yeah, that's a great way of putting it. <laughs> okay. So, um, for your fifth day, we're still going off of the previous uh, um, survival rules. 
What I do need, though, is uh, uh, another insight check. And we're gonna start... <laughs> oh no! To this. Paranoia is messing with you. <laughs> yep. It's yep. two in his own head. <laughs> Ooh, that's... He's like overcorrecting the anxiety. Yep. <laughs> He's manic. <gasps> oh. Okay. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Okay. Disadvantage. Um, actually, everybody except Pip <laughs> has passed this one. Oh. Um. Also, if Pip is trying to put on a to put on a, bra a brave face, um. I'm trying to decide if that would be. I think it would be deception, which That's has good, advantage because in I case. Put on the... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so just roll a Villain deception persona. check. Okay. Well, Pip, you fooled them all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody really notices that anything is off with you, uh, except Me and my a mild nose. bit of like, yeah. Um, for clarity, when Pip puts on this mask, now that he has fully figured out how it works and he has attuned to it, um, the mask, originally made of paper in its, uh, in its normal non-worn form, whenever Pip puts it on, it like molds onto the, his face, it becomes the same size for, for his head, and it becomes like a real face, it's no longer made of paper, it doesn't look like he's wearing a mask at all. Um, and this one specifically having yeah, this villainous looking face with a hooked nose. Um, it the only thing is that it looks a little a little funky on this like <laughs> child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, otherwise Pip is being Pip is being a child, is messing around. Um, Instead, what all of you minus Pip notice is that uh, today it's Nui who seems to be in a bit uh, of a different mood. Um, as you guys begin to travel again and you are on your horses, which today they are... What's an eight again? Ah, hold on, let me scroll. Six, seven, plus one. No, I mean, the, their type. They're shadowy. They're, ma they're made of shadows. Nice. Shadow um, horses! Shadow horses, indeed. Um, and today the weather is also like a little bit gloomy, and you're on these shadow horses, and uh, Pip, you have a bit of a like bad feeling uh, going on in the back of your mind that you're just ignoring. It's, it's nothing. <clears throat> it has to be nothing. Nothing happened yesterday. Uh, but almost everybody notices that just Nui has been even quieter than she already is. Um, there is some kind of... She, she's worried about something. She, it's uh, definitely a worrisome expression uh, that she's wearing just throughout the, the entire day. Uh, otherwise, progress is normal. It's constant. You're heading in the right direction. You're taking regular breaks. Besides the iffy weather, everything is okay. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka will hold up uh, Orm, uh, probably trying to cover it if it's raining, so the pages don't get wet. Um, mm. And we'll just say to Nui, something on your mind. Um, when you bring this up, Nui seems to be um, like quite open to it she immediately nods uh, um, sighs a little bit and then um, she speaks her voice is just a soft uh, whisper um, and uh, the sorry I'm looking at my notes um, the words uh, on uh, uh, on the book I'm gonna put them up here in the top right uh, are as follows
your friend who I don't know this Vina. Could you tell me more? Uh, yeah, would Tekka have ever heard anything like this? Like spirit animals or this name? I'm guessing not, but yeah. No, um, Tekka, Tekka has a chance of knowing. Um, we're gonna make it a history check. Can do. Nope. No, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Oh. I changed my control scheme and I broke something and I'll have to look into it later. Oops. Oh no! I cannot say I've heard any stories of spirit animals. Please, tell me more. Um, at this she smiles, so she doesn't seem to mind at all. Um, telling you about these... Uh, 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 telling you about this. They guide you towards a destination? <clears throat> Can you speak with your companion now? So was this in your dream? You notice a concern and upset. when she usually would. So, where did she leave you last night in your dream? place when you could have dreamed of anything else you dreamed of this hmm. 
So many things in my dreams I see. Places from long lost memories from my past or even dreams of stories of places I've never known. Uh, she listens to your description and uh, she just seems very like interested, very curious about what you're saying and she nods along and uh, uh, then she speaks again or beautifully translating everything she says. Uh, yeah, Tekka will nod to that first, to like reading the pa reading the words on the page, and then to her. I am thankful for that. So, do you believe your Katela would have seen something that night that worried her? Will you please let me know if your companion changes their be her behavior? Thank you. Um, and with that, um, yeah, Tekka will has to stay for a moment just to see if Nuri has anything else to say. Uh, if not, we'll. Uh, go up to the rest of the group and say we should be on the lookout it seems that there is something here around here that could be a danger to us what do you mean a danger um, if Tekka would show Orm to Brook right now would the would the word still be there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it would still be. Read this. This is what Nui told me. So it is very similar to Pip's feeling. Has Pip voiced uh, his concerns? Um, not specifically. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and that deception roll seems to like fool yeah. everyone. So. Denied. <laughs> all they all they would know is Pip was just feeling off yesterday, but mm -hmm. today has been hiding it pretty well. Yeah. Right. But Pip would want to look at the book to see what everybody else is talking about. Mm -hmm. You are um, you have the entirety of uh, uh, Nui's half of the conversation. <laughs> And, you know, Tekka fills in the, the gaps, so you know what's been, what has been talked about. <clears throat> if it helps in any way, I did sleep pretty badly. I had quite a few nightmares, so... If there is something around the corner, maybe we're all feeling it. Being Wait. a bit more tense. If, if her companion saw something, 
Why don't we just ask her? Apparently they don't speak. I speak moth? <laughs> well, you can try. Hold on. Uh, suddenly Pip's face turns back into paper and then refolds itself into a face with high cheekbones and a full expressive mouth. And he uh, takes out the gem of seeing, holds it up uh, in front of his eye, and uh, walks over to Nui and sees if he can see Vina. Uh, you do see the beautifully colored uh, giant uh, fl fluffy moth uh, um, again clinging onto Nui's shoulder uh, with you stepping a little bit closer uh, the, the giant moth shuffles so that it's more on Nui's back than the shoulder uh, but you can still see like the wings just the edges of them popping up from beneath the, from behind the shoulders it will try and ease his way into a position where Vina can see him, and then we'll speak Moth by fluttering his elbows out gently uh, <laughs> and flicking his tongue in and out, licking his lips and his nose in uh, dynamic patterns. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll basically just say, I sense something on the wind too. Did you see something? Uh, just to see how the Avina reacts to the, to this, go ahead and roll a persuasion check. It's not you're not like doing any persuading. It's more a, a feel for how gentle you're being with this uh, very shy creature. Fifteen. Okay. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the moth that only you can see climbs up on Nui's back again, just a little bit, uh, just enough so that you can you can you can tell that it's trying to like look at you. But as you walk around, Nui Vina keeps crawling just across her chest and across her head. Just you're doing little circles around her. Um, and she's constantly trying to, to keep uh, knowing in between the two of you. Uh, and then she uh, flutters her wings just very gently, very slowly. Um, and you understand her to say, Red eyes. Ippo will look back to the others and say, She saw something with red eyes. And we'll look back at Vina and uh, hold up his dreads like above his head and flail them around like antenna and say, Did you see anything else? How long ago was this? Red eyes in the night. Red eyes in the night. Well, that doesn't sound good. Just tell the others. Hmm. Nui just saw you, like, approach and do weird body language motions, and then walk around her a bunch of times, and then talk to the others again. She's very obviously confused about what's going on. <laughs> so fair. What would we know with red eyes? A wolf. <clears throat> yeah. Isn't Crimson the Red? Mm hmm. Could be the going in. That's what I just said, bro. Oh. <laughs> Pay attention. Oh, that's what you meant by the wolf. Oops. Yeah, it's the same person. <laughs> I saw <laughs> for some reason I saw you meant the werewolf. <laughs> Could be. Wait. <laughs> he was Ruby. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Where is Eyes Red? Mm. <laughs> Would any of us remember? <laughs> nope. Wasn't there. So it might as well have been red at this point from all the They're red. <laughs> yeah. They're red. We've solved your puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> You guys. <laughs> um, Regardless of what the exacts might be, I find that it's usually a not a bad idea to listen to these sorts of uh, gut feelings. We tend to pick up on things that we may not be conscious of. And, uh, red eyes or not, stay on guard. Are you uh -oh. planning to... What? <laughs> what? Sid just uh, shared something. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, when Talix uh, like drew a, made a drawing on of the gem wolf uh, based on the attacks. Uh, had my eyes. Oh, you shared on Discord. I see. Yeah. Talix depicts a wolf based on a farmer's descriptions: fluffy white fur, jewels embedded around the neck and on the spine. Red eyes, red fangs, red claws. Just hey, really yeah, was for the stream. Um, I think Pip is going to just have Squeak be on flight duty and uh, just fly around uh, as we're traveling and keep an eye out for anything. Okay. Uh, in that case, for the day... Turn invisible. Um, I will take a perception check from everybody, including Squeak. Squeak, no, uh, squeak, no, Pip. <laughs> um, now that your worries have been exterminated and acknowledged, um, even though you're showing outwardly that uh, um, you're not worried, um, the, the paranoia is back, just not with full strength. Um, and so you are very cautious and you keep checking with Squeak if he has seen anything and you keep checking with the rest of the party if they have seen anything. Uh, every once in a while you ask uh, Vina if she has seen anything. Um, and by the time the sun is beginning to set and you have made more progress uh, and you need to mark down one set of rations used up for today. The journey has been uninterrupted. The jungle is thinning out more and more. Uh, traveling has become just a lot simpler. The trees are further apart, so you can see um, you can see farther ahead now, uh, all around in every direction, and your horses are not struggling anymore. Um, more and more, this jungle is, is turning into this kind of sparse forest that is very easy to navigate and uh, very difficult to get lost into. Uh, in the morning, it was raining a little bit. Um, the sky remains clouded, but at least the weather becomes drier towards the evening. Uh, and you stop to set up your tower. And you're ready for the night. It spends another couple of hours in the kitchen and... Uh, at one point, either like before everyone goes to bed or after they wake up again, he's going to hand a potion of healing to uh, Tekka and Virian. Oh. Just say, oh. just in case, little this will it'll help heal your wounds. Oh. I appreciate it. 
thank you. That's uh, very thoughtful of you. It looks disgusting, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> it's like chunky green color. <laughs> There's some chunks of red in there, too. You know what? I'm sure you'll get better at this next time. <laughs> he, he didn't have a blender. <laughs> Like, he's running out of glass, so, like, some of it's just in little pouches that he could find in the kitchen. <laughs> just wet pouches. Oh, no. <laughs> it's healing over time. <laughs> Please take one bag of Sprite. Okay. Are you doing anything special tonight? Um, still studying that one potion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I appreciate that you're keeping track of stuff. K keep it up! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> if we have the bathroom tonight, I would probably take a bath and then head to bed early. Okay, that upsets Pontifex a little bit because he wanted the bathroom all to himself. Uh, <laughs> but he lets you take your bath, and when you're done with it, he immediately like just gets in the bathroom and closes it, and locks the door. Uh, you know, he likes to sleep, like literally to sleep in a bathtub. Um, so yeah, when once you're done with it, that's that's where he ends up being. Okay. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> exactly! A bag of Sprite. <laughs> Pip's potions are bagged. <laughs> <laughs> and I got nothing <laughs> special for tonight. No, me neither. Yeah, okay. We, um, let's proceed with the long rest. Um, Pip? Mm-hmm. Your dreams are once again, dude. You, you wake up with this terrible feeling of just imminent, uh, like, just imminent doom. There's something bad is about to happen any, any second. Uh, the dreams, <sighs> uh, you, you are left with, um slightly stronger memory of them um either that or perhaps you're just kind of projecting your fears like backwards into what you think you remember but you saw red eyes in your dreams um and it, it, come, it, it got mixed in a little bit with when you the memory of when you were back in the mine uh, about a week ago now and you saw yellow eyes just pairs of yellow eyes all around you you remember that scene from your dream, like that, but the eyes were red. Mm -hmm. Pip uh, reaches over. He's on the bag of flour right now, and he reaches over to the uh, one of the cabinets where he stuffed his paper mask, and he just puts it on, and, and uh, it transforms into the hero pers persona. And Pip is just determined to face this day head on, no matter what. I think for this morning, Brooke is not getting out of bed by himself. <laughs> so he just tries to sleep longer. It, the rest of you meet up for breakfast, uh, Pontifex just being extremely quiet. He doesn't even say good morning. Uh, Pip is showing up immediately just wearing this mask. He don't even, like, he's already by the time any of you walk into the kitchen he, he's already wearing it. Um, and uh, seems to be just uh, trying very hard. Fizzled. <laughs> yeah. Visibly fizzled, but trying very hard not to appear. And Brooke is straight up missing. <laughs> so 
I think. <laughs> uh, when when Fearing gets down to the kitchen, it just kind of like looks at everyone. Everyone, all, all right? Um, wait, have we seen Brooke? Uh, just, I'll go check on him. She'll go uh, check on Brooke. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I finally know what the feeling is about. <laughs> I've had a horrible feeling the last few days. <laughs> What's I horrible? know what it is. What is this feeling? This is Rock Pip's last day with us. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Pip just the head hanging low. <laughs> <laughs> then Pip. What would you like to do on the last day together? We need to... We need to make sure he has the best day possible. Hmm. What do you have in mind then? Some sort of celebration? Games? Um... Maybe, maybe we find a pond and skip rocks across it. And then when, when this one, when Rock Pip collapses, we throw him in too. A good send off. <laughs> yeah, I think Tekka just gives like a faint smile to that. <laughs> if we can find a water, then we can do that. Where did Brooke sleep? Uh, which other rooms did we have? Just pick one. All right. And they would have made it for the night. He is probably gonna land the bed then. Uh -huh. You guys have like now this uh, um, system where you rotate to get to sleep in the actual bedroom. Um, and. Uh, the, to, tonight was your night, so you actually got to sleep on a uh, on a nice bed uh, instead of having to use like the couch or your bedrolls. Uh, Vivian, you climb up uh, <clears throat> the the trapdoor, and uh, Brooke is still in bed, as in woken up, as in started putting on his armor. He's still there. Huh. <clears throat> just she'll just go over, not sneaking, but like as quietly as she can without like startling him, but also not not making noise so she doesn't startle him otherwise. And we'll just like shake his shoulder a little bit. He turns a little bit before you arrive already. Clearly being awake. And you can see his eyes big. Bags below it. Eyes red. Likes a little drawing here. <laughs> That's not <the> wide open. <laughs> um, I just came up uh, if you couldn't hear everyone. Uh, breakfast is uh, ready. Are you all right? You're looking a little rough. Not gonna lie. Since last night or the night before, actually, I have barely slept. I've been. Having terrible nightmares, so it feels like I haven't really slept for two days. So no. Is something you want to get off your chest, or I don't know what it is. It's like since we've talked, it's like all these memories of the war and everything I've done comes back and doesn't let go of me and doesn't let me sleep. I don't know what it is. I mean, I wish I could say that it goes away, but we both know it doesn't. I know it doesn't, but it's usually not that bad. Not to this level. 
It felt more real, less like a dream. I mean, I've encountered that a few times while we were here. It seems to be, there's always been something's doing. Uh, sort of uh, catapults me back to days I would like to forget. I don't know enough about that sort of thing to know if I don't know if it has lingering effects or, or something like that, but... Um. Oh, it's alright, I can come down. And Brooke tries to get out of bed, just very slowly. Here, and makes I'll... his way down or up, whichever. You actually go the wrong yeah. direction at first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why don't you let me go down the ladder first in case you slip and fall? So I fall on top of you? Uh, it's better than falling all the way to the bottom. I mean, Is it? It hurts two people instead of uh, one. Uh, look, I'm <laughs> old, but I'm not frail. I can catch you. <laughs> Alright. You can go first. And he goes back. <laughs> Let's her go first in the complete other direction. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where you're going, but I'm going. <laughs> um, uh, Brooke, this uh, this way. Oh, yeah. He is just very slow. Yeah. Like me today. <laughs> I think so. Virion's like sticking really close to him, like expecting him to like heal over right now. <laughs> All right, yeah. V uh, so, with a bit of work, Virion and Brook eventually make it. The rest of you notice in the Brook is also just very much sleep deprived. Uh, Nui showing up like right before the two of you do. Everyone's in the kitchen. Wait, if we leave Stone Pip here, does he get to live forever? <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, hi, Brooke. Why are you dead? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me that a day. Ask me that again in like 24 hours. <laughs> and he sits down and takes whatever the first thing is in front of him. <laughs> No! <laughs> no! <laughs> We're killing him! It's too early! You he has at least Brooke a few hours left! You see Brooke sitting down on the chair and like reaching forward um, and just blindly ta tapping his hand on, on the table until he finds something and it's, and it's Stone Pip's hand and he just brings it up <laughs> to his mouth uh, and closes his teeth on it. Crunch. Yeah, crunch. <laughs> and then puts it back down. Not food. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Um, all of you are looking pretty rough lately. Um... I'm a little concerned. Is this all about the eyes? Is that is what is worrying you? I didn't see eyes. For me, it's more bad dreams keeping me awake. Without just... rest, we are not going to make it through. <sighs> you all should yeah. know, this is Rock Pip's last day, and Pip wishes to commemorate the last day. Teacher, 
if we are not able to find water today, can you shape it? Can you build a pond? Looking towards Pontifex. Mm-hmm. Pontifex doesn't uh, even lift his eyes from uh, the food in front of him. I understand you are occupied, but this is important. For one day. Virion just kind of like reaches over and touches the tech on the shoulder and then leans in. He's, he's been like this for a few days if you haven't noticed. I'm just not fully with it, it seems. It's not just him, it's everyone's been acting strangely. And nightmares and all these strange feelings. Like I said, I try to trust my gut on these sorts of things and it just seems all like it's lining up where there's something is going on. If that is the case, then we should not just let it be. Then something is causing this. Um, I mean, that, I think Tekka will just storm out of the tower and shout, Reveal yourself! Oh. Seize this! <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Tekka, roll mm. a perception check. All right. The rest of you inside, as Tekka just storms down the ladder and out of the exit, you see um, Pontifex standing up uh, and uh, going after him. Oh? Okay, five. <laughs> yep. Tekka, you walk out from, from the exit. Uh, um, <clears throat> the... Sorry, I'm just trying to decide how the tower is structured today, but it doesn't particularly matter. Actually, you just go down a floor, out of the exit, and you just shout. Uh, it's another cloudy day. Um, the the rain is uh, just very faint. Like you step outside, um, just a couple of droplets hit your face as you shout, uh, and you listen. And in the area you're in, um, this very large clearing, like at the edge of. Uh, um, like you're, you're very close to the end of a forest the trees have become very sparse um, your voice reaches really far it doesn't echo but it fades into the distance you can hear really far um, and there's just the noises of uh, of the morning you hear birds chirping the wind is just very low, very faint Um, you wait for an answer for a few seconds. You shout again. Um, right at the beginning, like you take a step, you're gonna go around the tower and try again, just behind it. Um, you are struck by something. Um, or uh, let me rephrase that. I have rolled an attack roll that passes your armor class. Do you have like anything? I, I don't remember if you have any reactions or something to prevent an attack. Uh, would it be ranged? No. Okay, then no. Okay. Uh, oh no, what have I done? It's all good. Uh. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I did a classic me moment and a close the tab I needed. Okay. Uh, you take... Uh, I need a constitution saving throw. Okay. Okay. You take... 24 points of piercing damage. Something suddenly um, brings you pain to one of your shoulders. The pain is uh, horrible. Um, something is clamped uh, just into your flesh. Um, and then... Um, 
this is also a hit. Um, something digs into your back. Uh, oh, that's a wrong die. And uh, uh, opens up these gashes into your skin. Um, for an additional, whoops, what have I clicked? <laughs> Uh, I don't know how, but I have broken the Windows calculator. <laughs> and it's not working right now. That's a lot of like, damage. Open the calculator and it says, uh, check the Windows Store for more info about calculator. This app can't open. <laughs> Uh-oh. Tech attack 17 plus E to the power. <laughs> I have never seen this before. Anyways, I don't need a calculator for this. It's just I, I, I had it open. Um... So, an additional 19, these are slashing damage. <clears throat> um, so again, um, to, to go over it one more time, something hurts you on your shoulder and then on your back. You're currently facing away from the tower, and whatever hurt your shoulder is still kind of clamped there. Uh, what do you do? Uh, yeah, I think Tekka will just try to do, like, a spin, like a stop, drop, and roll situation, just trying to evade whatever is clamping onto him. Mm, okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's make that a contested, like, you're, you're essentially trying to escape a grapple. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so you can roll either acrobatics or athletics, and I'll roll my, uh, athletics. Okay, that passes. Um, you uh, essentially, it's the it's not the uh, with physical strength that you escape this, but uh, uh, it's it's your motion, your act of turning around. Uh, whatever was holding you couldn't quite keep up with uh, um, with your movement and was forced to let go. Um, you fumble forward, roll, step back up, and turn around towards the entrance to the tower. And you see Pontifex standing there, his mouth and hands both bloodied. Oh. Oh. He maintains eye contact for a few seconds. And then he disappears. He didn't say a single arcane word. He didn't say any word at all. He didn't move his hands in emotion. He's just gone. So disappears as a, as a no longer visible. Mm -hmm. Like, not here. Okay. Huh. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka, like, holding on to his wounds. Danger! It's here! The rest of you all hear this. Yeah. Yeah. Going, going out. Yeah, yeah. You, you all... Like, immediately. You all rush outside, uh, in... Seeing everybody, like hearing someone shouting and seeing everybody run out. Uh, Nui comes as well. Uh, do you want Stone Pip to come or do you want Stone Pip to become a part of the tower forever? Is that like, would he? I would don't know. he live forever? Oh. You, you were in the middle of talking about or it. Would do, he just do you be tell, a, do you tell a Stone Pip, Pip statue to... for all time? <laughs> do you tell Pip statue to follow? No. Okay. <gasps> Would you tell Pip Statue to, to stay? Yeah, what pose? <laughs> yeah, Pip Statue will will pose uh in the kitchen in like one of the corners of the kitchen uh as like a, a coat rack, like with, with hands outstretched. <laughs> so you can jump scare everyone to come in the kitchen for a midnight snack. Yeah, as if he's <laughs> as if he's casting like magic in front of him. So, kind of just looking like a horrifying zombie in the corner. <laughs> we give him a knife. We have him hold a knife. Yeah. Give him a knife. <laughs> no. Yeah, we'll we'll take his knife copy and have him hold that out. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of you rush outside to find uh, uh, Tekka bloodied. Um, these 
marks on his back like he was slashed by claws, multiple, uh, a set of three different gashes across his shirt and his back. Uh, his shoulder uh, just mangled. Um, he's, he's bleeding, he's holding on to it. Pontifex is nowhere to be seen. What happened? I don't know. Something hurt me, and a Pontifex is gone. Don't know. Can I take a look around? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what, what kind of looking around? Uh... If I see anyone. Yeah, roll a perception check. Ah, uh, you Who don't? Do There's just Tekka. There's the rest of you. There's Nui. Nothing is out of place. Tekka, take your potion, we'll look around. Pontifex <sighs> did follow you out here. Yeah, I saw him. He looked into my eyes with bloody hands, and then he is not here. Wait, did he hurt you? I, I don't think, I don't know. He couldn't, he's too old. <laughs> I don't think he has claws. Oh, that too. <laughs> but why would he disappear? And yeah, Tekka will now drink the healing potion. Mm -hmm. Virion's got her shield out. Gone out. Professor! There's no response. Everyone st uh, stay close. Don't go running too far off right now. If something is going on, uh, clearly. Um, or we're all just mass hallucinating again. <clears throat> I sense nothing. I smelled nothing. Heard nothing. Then suddenly, it held on to this. And like, Tekka is like nodding to the shoulder he's all holding on to. As you as you nod toward your shoulder, you see that like on your on your left, uh, right beside you, Nui is holding up a hand, like almost to touch your shoulder, but she makes eye contact with you and and pauses, and you can tell she's like just waiting to make sure that uh, she has permission to proceed. Take I will not to her. Yeah, she touches you with just the tip of her index finger, and um. Even though that touch is very light, it still burns a little bit on your just exposed, uh, um, on your exposed flesh. Um, and then you heal for five points. Some, uh, a, po a small portion of the wounds uh, um, just visibly stop, no longer bleed, uh, although uh, they're mostly still open. We have two choices. We either hide in that tower, or we make a move. We need to go. We have to find him. Yeah, if Pontifex is gone, we have to find him. Hiding in the tower won't solve anything, especially if whatever's going on is possibly affecting us in there. It's very well... Sorry to be blunt, but kill us in, in there for hiding anyway. Plus, he summoned this tower, so if he closed it on us while we were in there, we'd become part of the tower forever. Well, you know I don't, the tower. I don't know. Um, uh, you've been using this for long enough. It go if it's not uh, put away by um the person who summoned it, uh, just willingly. Whenever you guys leave, 
it sticks around for 24 hours exactly. Um, so you guys set it up yesterday evening, a little bit, like around the sunset or so. So uh, unless Pontifex unsummons it, it's going to be around for a few more hours for the rest of the day, essentially. Well, we need to find them. Uh, Pip's going to try and look for any tracks. <clears throat> yeah, check. I would... I would also cause detect magic and start walking around just to see if I catch anything. 22. <clears throat> so, because of the weather in this region having been kind of bad, um, your footprints from yesterday have uh, stuck in the mud and they're still there very visible very easily easy to distinguish um and so pep you count uh, and you verify each of the footprints and you can see your own and rock pips uh everybody in your group uh nui your the ones that belong to pontifex and the, you are certain that there are no additional footprints that shouldn't be there uh, you see also um, on uh, the footprints that come out, the ones that all of you have just left. Um, and with that good roll, um, you were lucky enough where the footprints of uh, Tekka coming out of the tower and Pontifexes as well. Um, they're very clear. You guys haven't really stepped on them just by chance. Uh, so you can see... Pontifex is going right up to where Tekka was standing. Um, and then you don't see any footprints of him leaving. Tekka's continue up to the point where he's standing right now, but uh, Pontifex's just end. We um, And we've never seen Pontifex go invisible before, have we? That's... Like, I don't think that's something that we knew he could no. do. I am pretty sure that you are correct. I don't believe invisibility has ever been something that he can do. That's my uh, detect maybe. magic catch anything? Uh, as for your detect magic, besides the usual, everything on you guys, there is nothing unusual of magical nature around you. Not within the radius. Like, you check behind the tower, all around, like, where you guys are, where Tekka was attacked. Nothing. It will hold up the gem of seeing again and just take like a 360 look around. Okay. Yeah. You hold up your gem and you look around and you can see, um, you can see the moth, uh, uh, Vina, um, very much freaking out. Just the wings flapping, uh, while she's still holding onto Nui, um, kind kind of frantically. Uh, doesn't even seem to notice that you're next to her. Uh, you're looking around, you look in the direction that the moth seems to be looking, and you pause. You see Pontifex, you see Pontifex's face. But not the rest of his body. Um, oh. And suddenly it, it all clicks. Uh, you're seeing a person with a long mane of white hair uh, in these really oh. worn and dirty... Um, leather clothes uh, as he slowly removes this mask that has been carved in Pontifex's liking. Uh, he takes a deep breath, he opens his eyes, deep red in color, and then he makes eye contact with you. He shifts his position just a little bit and he notices that you're following him with your gaze. He seems surprised but not worried. His expression, hard. Blood around his mouth and on his hands. He maintains eye contact in a way that feels almost like a challenge. Don't blink. Hip's breathing suddenly gets very heavy. What do you see? It's... it's him.
Pontifex? No. No. What? What did you do to him? What did you do to the professor? You shout. There isn't really much recognition in his eyes. He doesn't understand your tongue, but he maintains eye contact anyway. He doesn't smile, seeing your, your panic, your anger. His expression just remains this hard, um, cold one. Blood drips from his ruby box down the chin. Where, Pip? Where? He's right there. Pip just points. Pip points. Brooke, you look where he's pointing. Still detecting no magic whatsoever. You are not yourself a spellcaster, but you know enough to know that if somebody turns invisible, you can't see them, but you should be able to sense their magic. But there's nothing. Can I punch the area? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can approach slowly. The rest of you see that Brooke's movements are just very sluggish. Um, but he's steering himself and... Um, do you want to punch or swing your weapon? Oh, swing my weapon. Okay, sure. Roll on attack roll. Oh, I wasn't prepared for some reason. <laughs> mm. uh, you have to do it at disadvantage because you're not yeah, seeing... Yeah, yeah. Okay. You swing. You're not hitting anything. Pip corrects you a little bit, a little bit further ahead, a little bit more to the left. You do it again. Pip, on the second swing, the one you helped him aim, you see the weapon going right through the man. He's completely unaffected. He's like a ghost. I don't understand. Please just, just say something. What? Where's Pontifex? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We didn't know. You see him put away Pontifex's mask in his backpack. Each of his movements just very slow and deliberate. Every once in a while he glances back at you and the rest of the group. He puts his backpack back on. He stares at you. What is he doing? He's just... looking at me. Hmm. How long does your gemstone... Uh, work for? Um... Ten minutes. Okay. Sorry. I feel like I'm a little out of the loop again. Uh... One of our first missions, at least it's him that says him, we were supposed, well, one of my first missions, we were supposed to save a village from a beast which turned out to be a giant wolf and we slayed that beast and learned later that it was a mother <clears throat> whose children after that were left defenseless while the father who is a werewolf um lost them all and I assume he went after us now and found us. I 
I should start asking about these things up front more often. Yeah. Probably helps. What do we want to do? Dip's going to try and walk forward and see if he can touch him. <clears throat> you hold out a hand. You, you do see him um, freeze up. His muscles tense. You push your hand through him. He relaxes. You don't. You're not here. How did you hurt Tekka? Pit backs up. Besides having no reaction to your words, he just seems to be waiting. He's just hmm. there, watching you. I don't, I don't know what he wants. Can any of us speak to him? Oh, wait, we can. We know Krill. What the heck? I forgot. <laughs> uh, Pip will say everything oh, that he's God. been saying <laughs> in Krill. <laughs> I was just sitting here like, oh, my God. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, what do what you say in Krell? First what thing did you, you say. do to the professor? Okay. Um, the, the man immediately just visibly, he, he flinches. Proving that uh, he has heard you, he has understood you. Um, when, it, when he makes eye contact again, his expression has, for the first time, just shifted a little bit from that uh, uh, cold and neutral uh, one to just a moment of genuine surprise is quick to return to um to to distance himself from this again um he breathes in and he opens his mouth to speak and you hear nothing you see the lips moving but this whole time none of his movements have made any sound and his voice doesn't reach you. You can tell from his reaction that he understood you. But you're not hearing him. Whatever you're saying, I can't hear you. Look, if we... If we all agree to stay calm, can we just... Have a conversation? He shakes his head. Just from the way he looks and how firm his gesture is, it's clear that for him the time for talking is long gone. Look, I'm sorry for what we did, but we only did it to protect kids. She was going to kill them. Mm. The man extends a hand, um, like, like to show you something, and you see the blood on his hands, and he... He tenses up his fingers a little bit, and you can see that they begin to shift. White fur covers his skin, long red claws seemingly made of just rubies. Uh, they take the place of his nails. Uh, blood now stains his, uh, his fur, uh, and uh, he points the clawed hand at your group. And then he runs a finger across his throat. If you touch any more of my friends, I will take everything away from you, not just what you think you've lost. 
everything. Once more, you are met with a shaking of his head. <clears throat> his hand slowly returns uh, to um, its humanoid semblance. And once again, he just waits. just is still tense and looks around to the others, says in Plurinen, I don't know what he's waiting for. I don't know what he wants. He's probably going to wait till he can surprise and attack us again. He doesn't understand us, right? Not, I don't think so. Not when we're speaking this language. <clears throat> but this gem, it can see things that are only in dreams. He's in the dream realm right now. Is there some way that we can get to him? Go to the tower? Go to sleep? Maybe, maybe we enter the dream world and then screw him up. I don't know. We've I done might, it before. I might have a way, but... It would be only for myself. I'm not sure if it works. But then I would be by myself in there. I can do it right now. I can just go behind them and try it. Um, maybe? I don't know. He's strong. We can't lose more. That we already have. <clears throat> if it is that you are going to have to fight him in dreams, I don't know if I can help you. Hmm. I've got it. Granny can dreamwalk. I'll send her a. I'll send her a letter. Maybe she can help us. So, what do you do? Should we go back to the tower for now? Yeah, see if he follows us. Can we, like, close the door on him? <laughs> yeah, try it. <laughs> Let's see if he can get in. Just like, okay, three, two, one, go! <laughs> to the tower! <laughs> uh, yeah, you run back into the tower, you slam the door behind you, you look through the gem, and um, you, you don't see him managing to follow you. Instead, he just walks through the door calmly. Oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you suck! <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so <clears throat> Pip, uh, Pip's gonna go over to this table, hand the gem to Virian, let you look through. Uh, while Nip and Squeak are going to write a letter to a Granny. A strongly worded letter. Okay. A strongly worded <laughs> letter. <laughs> saying, Dear Granny, <laughs> <laughs> we are being hunted by a werewolf, Krelko. We believe that he is... He scratches out, we believe. <laughs> <laughs> He's... Stevie, please hush. I'm trying to talk right now. Uh, he's, he's in the dream world. And we have no way of reaching him. Can you help us fight him? Or at least get us in the dream world to fight him. Thank you. <laughs> Signed. Pip. And it's going to fold it up. And put it in the uh, the bag that sends things to the green. Wow. Okay. 
<laughs> You're asking for for a uh, hmm hmm. Hmm. Uh, I I have I have to think about this. Um If you need 5 minutes, we could Okay. Uh can you run the word into me one more time? Dear Granny. Okay. okay. We are being hunted. By a werewolf, Krelko. He is in the dream world, and we have no way of getting there. Can you help us fight him, or get, or or uh, just get us to the dream world? Okay. Tell me what. Uh, I'm going to call for a break now. Uh, I know. Give you the answer after that. Uh, meanwhile, I just want to establish, like, Nui has been gently pestering Tekka to see the book and try to figure <laughs> out what you guys are talking about. Because um, you, you all could understand the hip side of the conversation in Krelko. She couldn't. Um, and she doesn't have the context for the werewolf either. Uh, so while mm -hmm. Pip is writing the letter, she'd like to be brought up to speed if you guys are okay with that. Yeah, I think Tekka would like give a, like a general uh, description, but would not go into detail about what happened. But like, at least make her aware of like what we're up against. Okay. Uh, and she would have one comment about this then. But uh, this map is black, so let me just change to white color for writing, and I'll put it in the top right. Uh, like this. Jory, do you know about the stone mask? Nope. I mean, no. I'm, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a long time ago, we received a... We received a stone mask from uh, a group of Atarava uh, as, like, a gift, I believe. Or no, was it from... Uh, that was a different mask, wasn't it? This was from... Was this from the Lord of the Skies in in Nataran form? I'm trying to look. The stone mask. Um, you're talking about the mask of the Observer, yeah? The yes. And that be being, yeah, that one was given to you by the Etarava. It was yeah. that and the parrot mask. Right. Those were the gifts you received. Okay, so. The uh, yeah, the Atarava gifted us this stone mask that, when carved into the face of another person, it would allow us to see through their eyes. Um, and I believe Pontifex traded that mask away to the Lord of the Skies in a Taran form when we didn't know that he was the Lord of the Skies. And then at some point in a dream. Uh, we saw, or Pip saw a vision of that mask falling from the sky onto the ground where this, this Krauko werewolf picked it up. And so we knew that he was going to eventually find us. You he see, could've, you could have warned me about that. Oh no! I didn't think it would come up. <laughs> I, I love that everything about Virion, like you know, backstory, and then ever since you met, it's all like this could all have been avoided if I had just been told ahead of time. 
Yes. <laughs> Listen, all well, I remember from Virion is that it's not time for backstory. I was so just I about to say yeah. I always say it, it's not time for backstory. Well, okay. Guess we won't tell you these things. Which it's not time for my backstory. I need your backstory. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that is not just something you just randomly bring up. No. By the way, we're being I... hunted by the father of uh, 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 someone whose family we killed. So, are you familiar with the term matricide? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> when I waited to start a conversation. No, it was more than that. We also <laughs> killed his kids. Well, <laughs> killing, killing the mom resulted in the murder of his children. But that's beside the point. <laughs> more manslaughter, but yeah. Okay, on this, uh, on this note, I'm going to call for a break. Uh, how much longer can you all stick around for another hour and a half? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah? okay. Then I'm going to call for a 10-minute break. Okay. All right. See you in 10. See you in a bit. Yeah. For clarity. Pontifex has been talking. He's been doing his healing magic. He has been creating water for you every day. Um... His mood had changed in the last few days. Not enough for most of you to notice. It was really just Virion, and then she voiced it, and then like you all kind of noticed it. Um, but he didn't say a single word specifically today. That's where he said nothing to all of you at any point. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's everything. Um, so, resuming, where we left off, um, I, I don't know if this music is, like, too chill for what's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you put your short letter into the pouch, Pip, and you wait. And you wait for a bit, and then nothing really seems to have happened, so you stick your hand back in, and there's a piece of paper that is, um, this one is rolled up instead of being folded, like the one you put in, so you, you pull it out, uh, and you unfold it, uh, and, uh, um, you find, um, this! Uh, okay. I've got something. Young child of dreams so bright, you seek my aid in the depths of night, yet fail to see the truth in plain sight. Hold tight those verses, your beacon of light. Wait, didn't my list say something about that? It was in the, the last part. Something like that. In realms unknown and far from day, your search unfolds a price of pay. Embrace the verses, hold them tight. They'll lead you through the stormy night. It's a stormy night, isn't it? Is it? Uh, right now it's morning. What time is it? <laughs> we <Right>. missed it! <laughs> <laughs> but the weather has been, yeah, it's been raining on and off. You heard the, the rumble of lining every once in a while. Well, now it's a light rain. Well, she says I see Kurade in the depths of night, but it's not night yet. So we have to wait? I mean, it just might be because that's when you sleep. If we're dealing with dreams. Ugh. I don't understand. Seems that this um, uh, a wolf and this book gave Barry and the Barry and the gem, right? Yep, yep. She, does, does it work for her if she uses it? And it's not like a. I believe it does work for you. 
Uh, okay. it's, is it an attunement item? Wait, let me check. Yeah. Uh, gem requires attunement. Oh, it is. So no, it just okay. has to be pip. Okay. Oh, you think you've I'm been crazy, frantically then? you've <laughs> yeah. been frantically looking yeah. through it. You have no idea what it, what it's talking yeah. about. Uh, it just gave her a rock. Yeah. You know, <laughs> not not unusual. Not unusual. Um, no. So uh, the problem here is this uh, wolf werewolf situation. Um, he is uh, in dreams, and which honestly might be why you haven't been sleeping well. Just a hunch, and probably why I'm fine because I don't dream. Um, uh, Pekka. Yes. Have Have you been having strange dreams at all? It's just them. I fear I'll dream of this, but up till now, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, uh, well, sorry, sorry about that. Um. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Who are you? What if we're still dreaming? That's impossible. I don't dream. Well, Talix thought that too, and he still dreamed sometimes. I mean, I suppose it's not entirely out of the question, but it's just... She said you seek my aid in the depths of night. It's clearly not night outside, but what if we're still dreaming? What if we're in the nightmare? Can I pinch myself? <laughs> yeah. Awake. It hurts. Well, seems pretty real for me. There's been a lot of crazy well. things going on lately. For example, well, I don't think the last <laughs> few months have been a dream. <laughs> <laughs> so what's a beacon of light? The, the, I don't know. I don't know what the verses are. The, the ones that she Oh, wait. Me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. I know you're tired, it's okay, I've got, I've got you. Okay, what's the truth in plain sight? Because obviously that's what we, we're looking for. <laughs> the truth in plain sight is that the lens you've been carrying um maybe let me look through it again you activate them again yes and I okay. look at the wolf and then I look back down at the piece of paper maybe she hid something <laughs> hidden text um you find that the white haired man is in the kitchen with you. He's sitting down in one corner. Ah, uh, just on the floor. While my cat is eating my dice, hold on. That is such an invasion of privacy. <laughs> <laughs> the um, coming from inside the house. Unplug your cameras. And what else are you looking at? The note, in case Granny hit something. The, the one you have just received? Yes. Okay, it looks the same. Okay, Pip gets another piece of paper and writes what, and then puts it back in the pouch. (laughs) 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 You wait, you stick your hand back in, it's empty. Wow. What is the spirit animal of Nui doing? Can you see it? Um, can you see it? 
No, not me, but through okay. the lens, I thought. Right. Um, like uh, Pip can, Pip. Yeah, Pip can check that uh, and see that it's still on his shoulders, very much looking in the corner where Pip can see the man. Um, mm -hmm. And just being visibly scared. Pip looks through the loop of the Skyward Dagger. Still, still totally day outside. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um... Do any... Oh, what the... F I don't... Ah! <laughs> <sighs> Let's go through it one more time. You think that these letters are the clue to getting out of here or getting to wherever P is? Maybe... You looked at the, the letter you just got. Did you? What's the, the one you got before with the the verses that you keep forgetting about? Um, is that also on a piece of paper? Uh, the like the third list. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is there something on there that you can see? Let me look. Look at it with the gym. Uh, the third list? Yeah. The paper shimmers. There's waves of light washing over it. I don't know what that means, but it's shimmering. I have an healthy brain's positive. Embrace versus all the Okay. I've got an idea. I'm gonna go sleep in this corner while I hold these verses. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold them tight. Uh, you... I would be able to sleep, Pip. i I can make some sleeping pills. I really can. <laughs> That's actually something I can do now. <laughs> Amazing. Do you already have them? No. Yeah, yeah, Hold on. Let okay, me okay, make yeah. sleeping pills <laughs> so I can sleep. <laughs> no, it'll take too long. I'm just going to sleep. Oh, yes. <laughs> one, one thought. Can I see that note? Yeah. Hmm. What if you are not the one to embrace them, but the notes themselves? Stack them like a book. Okay. Then look again. It will follow Tekka's lead here. What exactly are you doing? Uh, Tech is essentially just telling him to like stack the different lists on top of each other and then like looking through the lens again to see if it makes a difference. Are uh, you putting the papers like onto you? Oh. Uh, stacking them and then looking through them with the lens. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't change anything. Okay. All right, give me one hour. I'm making sleeping pills. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all should get some rest. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm fine. Uh, I can stay up. I mean, it's also it's the middle of the day. I mean, I know you all are tired, but if he is attacking in 
in dreams, you might not get much rest anyway. I can hardly rest knowing that he's here. Just That's what the rest. sleeping pills are for. <laughs> I can make 14 of them. <laughs> Does anything uh, happen in an hour? <laughs> um, <laughs> if nothing happens, I think Tekka will have a short conversation with Nui. Um, tell me okay. about these witches. Have you met them before? Are they here in the Daria? Dang it, I figured it out! <laughs> Just jump scare. What is it? It goes off. I'll, I'll let her talk first. Against the table. <laughs> Pip, Pip, Pip has like What'd five just happen? narcotics on the table. And then he's, he just slams the table. It's like, I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't it take an hour? No, he stopped. <laughs> oh! He had like the okay. fridge logic moments. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little lost. We're stupid. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? You already had some. No. No. Get an I epiphany. Making them. I had an epiphany. <laughs> okay. What was your epiphany? <laughs> what is something in this room? That can guide us into dreams. <laughs> Mina! Oh. Everybody so turns to look at Nui, and uh, she is looking at the rest of you, and then attack her, and then down at the book to try to figure out why suddenly the attention is all on her. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tekka will just ask Nui, can she lead us into the dream realm? Nui pauses for a few seconds and then gives an unconvinced nod and when she speaks or translates uh, uh, and the writing says Yeah, space. Tekka. <laughs> yeah, Tekka will uh, nod to Pip. Then you might be right. You will not be alone. She is visibly unsure, but still gives a nod. What will we need to do? Hmm. 
her. Pip, we may not need your medicine. Okay, another time. Well, no time like the present. Just in case, it's. I don't. I, I cannot sleep and dream. It's just how we are. Um, I may not be able to help you. And Joey yeah. will keep you company, Virian. <laughs> he hands you a very creepy doll. <laughs> oh. I, I have no need of it anymore. <laughs> it... Describe Joey in detail. Joey is uh, a little cloth doll. <laughs> uh, it looks like a, a child with uh, with like a uh, sort of yarn blonde hair and a beret, and it's got button eyes, and one of them is just sort of dangling by a thread. Thank you, Pip. This was a um, very thoughtful. I'm less concerned for for myself, though, and for the rest of you. Well, you should still try. Maybe it will work. So I'm not entirely not going to participate, but I just wanted to give a fair warning that it may not work. Maybe we need someone on this side anyway in case he shifts out. This is also true, especially if you are going to be asleep and uh, vulnerable. I'll, uh, I'll stay awake with Virian. I'd just be in a cage over there anyway. <laughs> True. <laughs> you and me again, Squeak? I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. On uh, Orm's pages, uh, uh, one last time, you see the ink collecting into words as Nui asks if all of you are ready. Broken yeah. knots. Okay. Be our guide. Nui stands up from the chair she was sitting down on, clears her throat, and begins to sing. <laughs> for oh, Pippa a little bit. Back. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, for a little bit, uh, uh, for the next few seconds, you see um, on Orm open on the table, uh, on its pages, uh, as he begins to translate the words of the song, um, but it's becoming harder and harder to actually read. Each of you yawn and you settle back into a comfortable position, either on the chairs or against the wall, um, just maintaining a little bit of distance from the spot uh, that Pip specifically pointed out as being occupied by, by the man that is hunting you down. Viren, you watch as... Uh, each of your new companions drifts into sleep. Tekka first, then followed by Brook and Pip. The statue of Pip is uh, diligently standing um, in its new pose as a, a as a coat like rack thing. Yes, um, a coat hanger. Um, <laughs> you hear a little thunk as a squeak. Also falls asleep, uh, and like you, oh. like he, no. he bumps onto your shoulder and you catch him. 
Yeah. Uh, he, oh, he's God. out. Oh, dear. Yeah. He oh, put no. him on a kitchen counter. In the pot. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and after a few minutes, Nui is done with her song. Uh, she had to close her eyes throughout all this, and now she opens them. And she looks at you, Viren. And she says something, and she extends a hand towards you. Looking down on the book on the table, uh, you see Orm translating for you. Uh, Virian reads this and looks almost amused a little bit and then just takes her hand and nods. Okay. You take Nui's hand. Everybody take back your minis. up Blech. i didn't clear the table properly ah, that's fine oh he did become Here. a permanent addition <laughs> <laughs> oh i hope i didn't break the script it didn't change the colors oh that would suck um do me a favor and all of you just wear your blindfolds real quick while i try to find this because i'm not sure where it is uh, press B on your keyboard to put the blindfold on. Dennis? Was it B? B, yeah. B for blindfold. Perfect, thank you. Uh, just give me a moment. I have no idea what this is. The air around you smells clean, pleasant. There is a breeze upon your skin. You try to open your eyes, but you can't quite manage to do it. Your eyelids just feel very heavy, or, or perhaps your eyes are already open, and it's just really dark, and you can't see anywhere. Uh, you're not entirely sure what is going on with your body you can't really feel it you can't move you're not sure if you're standing or sitting you're not sure which direction you're facing uh, and then you see a, a fluttering of wings colorful and bright and massive you see a moth ahead of you uh, its wings just casting all sorts of colors of light in, in its surroundings, and the moth is, is bigger than even Brook is. Um, big enough that you could potentially just ride on it and fly off. And with the moth casting light all around you, you see a, a scene coming into focus. Grass all around you, flowers, a large tree with uh, uh, pink leaves and pink flowers on it. You have seen this scene before. Uh, you may remove your blindfolds and uh, place your tokens uh, on on here. 
Oh damn. <clears throat> It's been a long time since you've seen this tree, and you recognize it immediately. It would be difficult not to. Uh, the giant moth uh, is floating, uh, um, just hovering in the air, uh, a small distance behind you. You're between it and the tree. Um, the flapping of its massive wings uh, somehow doesn't make a sound. Um, but the light it sheds on your surroundings is, is real. You see uh, the the light being made of, of like all sorts of colors when it uh, um, when it shines on your skin, um, it makes these patterns uh, on your skin, on your clothes that kind of match the geometric patterns on its uh, on her wings and also on on Louis's skin. You breathe in again, and uh, everything is peaceful here, pleasant. But then the moth begins to fly away, and you know to follow. Pip, you bend down, you pick up the cage with Squeak in it, and you chase after Vina. The landscape changes quickly around you. You're traveling at impossible speeds, just leaping over mountains, over forests, like it's nothing. Ladaria just unfolds before you and you can see farther than should ever be possible. The weather changes so fast around you, uh, the day and the night cycle no longer really seems to matter and the stars have never shined brighter above you. <clears throat> until you spot uh, your own tower where you just were moments ago although it feels like weeks ago your journey it took you so long to get here but there's a tower in the middle of the forest the last place where you saw pontifex the place where you're supposed to be right now you don't need to use the front door. You just move through the walls. Virion. <laughs> you take Nui's hand. And then... Something happens. And... This is a sensation you've never felt before in your life. It feels like you're suddenly plunged downward you're falling or or no you're not falling you're rising you're being flung against the gravity upward and upward at impossible speeds it feels like you're leaving your own body behind and your spirit is set free the sensation is scary but also exhilarating and the longer you're stuck in this upward freefall it's actually beginning to feel somewhat familiar you can't quite place it whatever is happening to you you have left behind the tower and you're soaring feels like you have wings of your own you glance around trying to get your bearings, figure out where you are and whether you can control this, and for a while you're just kind of stuck falling, perhaps forever, into the sky until you see a moth. A giant moth flying overhead, colors bright, beautiful. And as it flies over you, you find it easier to follow it than to try to stop this upward motion that is just dragging you further and further away from the land, from the sea. It's as if the moth's wings are creating this air current that just facilitates you being sucked into it and dragged along with it. Riding on the moth is Nui. 
She waves at you, extends a hand for you to grab. Yep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab it. You do, and you are brought onto the giant moth. Far bigger than Pip had described it. Um, and you are taken across the sky and through the stars themselves. Wind blowing against your face. It's warm. You don't really know what's going on, but it doesn't feel wrong. Until the moth descends towards a familiar sight. Your companion's tower in the middle of the forest. You're about to just crash into the wall, but you don't. You pass right through. What you see on the other side, I will have to prepare for next time. So I'll end the session oh. here. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Amazing session, Winther. Woo! Very I was well I was full of fear, confusion, <laughs> pain. You'll need two emotions: <laughs> anger and confusion. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Even Stevie, Stevie loved it. Aww, I'm glad Stevie <laughs> loved it. I. Didn't think you'd be trying to head into the dream world. So I'll just have to prepare for it. But I <laughs> love it. I'm <laughs> happy that that's what you decided to do. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll call the session here. Thank you very much for having joined me today. Will you all be there next week? I will be. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Lovely. Then I will see you next Sunday. Yes. Have a lovely week, everyone. It is my turn to do the recap next week, correct? Uh, yes. Because yeah, okay. Dennis and Austin had swapped around. So yes, it will be yours. Yeah. All right. I'll end the stream now. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.